good morning and good evening beautiful people what's popping a hey, march madness slash april madness is officially over uconn got the dub last night over purdue smacked him around too dion that was kind of a little bit of a blowout and then of course on the women's side what everyone was looking forward to to be honest we're being real here Caitlin Clark versus South Carolina. Who is going to win that matchup? And Queen Don Staley came out on top. We're going to be talking about that later in the podcast. But Dion, as always, let's talk about our weeks. How was your week so far? Uh, pretty pretty slow, boring week for me. Um, I'm rewatching uh, Final Destination. I heard that there's a new movie coming out, so uh, I'm finna binge watch one through no five. way bro no yeah, way no, i bro. just uh i don't know maybe i just never peeped it but i just saw like a plot twist where they were talking about like the fifth movie links to the first movie and i was like oh damn so i was like well i guess i'm gonna rewatch this and uh get get back caught up on uh just the craziness that is final destination but uh, what about yourself okay okay yeah my week has been pretty chill and nothing crazy uh, just had the anger this weekend. Um, of course, a lot of big news coming out on the 40 acres. But uh, on that note, though, let's just start with Texas softball. What a weekend it was for those yet ladies down there. Yeah, clap it up. Clap it up. Beats Oklahoma, number one ranked Oklahoma, that is, for the first time in a series since 2009. Almost two decades since that's happened. And they did it off the bats of freshman Katie Stewart and off the glove of other freshmen, Caden Henry. I know Henry in that second game had that diving catch and then also had the big throw from the outfield to get the final out as Reese Atwood got that out and held onto the ball. But then in game three, Katie Stewart hits the two-run homer to put UT on top, and they were able to keep that lead. So, Dion, bro, freshman. That's how they do it nowadays. They step yeah, up, bro. All the freshmen is there's no waiting waiting for them to develop. They coming in, standing on business. Standing, standing on, on business. business. <laughs> and it's it's good to see, man. It's good to see to no no people gotta wait one year, two years, gotta wait behind people. People coming in straight off the straight off a of prom and mm -hmm. and coming to contribute, man. It, this is beautiful. It's beautiful to see. Uh when you when you were watching, did they did they look like they were like that? Like Oh, I mean, it's kind of crazy to think that, like, this team is very young. And that's the thing with this Texas softball squad. And that's what's exciting about it. There's so much young talent on this roster. Of course, they have the veterans out there. But the, a lot of the big plays were made by the young ones. And so that was super dope to know that they stepped up in a moment like Oklahoma, right? You know, number one team in the country, so much history. And knowing that Texas hasn't had a lot of success against Oklahoma in years past. And so... That not getting to them and them showing the ice in their veins and, and coming up in clutch moments, I think that says a lot about not only the leadership on that team, but also the people that Coach White is recruiting to come to Texas, and he knows that they got that dog in them. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. Roof, roof. Bark, bark. You know Ooh. what I'm saying? What? The Longhorns move. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Dude, there Longhorns... I don't know if long going to move. It's anyway. It's a cow, ain't it? No. Oh, here we go. Now you want to disrespect. <laughs> but, yeah, <it's, laughs> you're wild for that one. But, yeah, bro, it's a great, great atmosphere as well out there at McCombs Field. Packed house, left field was going crazy. So, just great to see the support for women's sports. Like we talked about women's college basketball, about how watched that was, you know, compared to the men's game. But even, like, Texas softball this weekend, like, it's another example of, like, dude, when you have great talent, in this women's sports people are going to watch and it's going to be exciting i mean so i was at the, I was at the edge of my my seat the whole game between texas and ou and uh can't wait to see how this trampolines the team for the rest of the season and the rest of conference play but yeah on the other side though baseball not so hot uh they lost to byu this weekend in, the, in a series and uh it's First, first Big 12 loss of the year, though, for Texas baseball. I will say that in conference play. So uh, that's that's a positive note. First series loss, I should say. Um, and so let's see if they bounce back this week against Texas State. Big time matchup with Texas State. They not bad. They actually pretty nice. They got a lot of good bats. They're coming off a series loss against Marshall, though. So both teams are going to be looking to bounce back and get a win. And so it should be an exciting time down in San Marcos this week but exciting times for this podcast too dion because man we got a guy coming up in the show because that's basically why a lot of y'all are here right now is listen to christian jones former longhorn right tackle heading into the draft from houston used to play soccer back in the day and of course 
He's just a great guy. <laughs> He's just a great guy. So, so much to talk about Dion when it comes to Christian Jones. And I just hope all y'all enjoy our conversation. All right, everybody, the big fellas in the building. Former Longhorn now. It kind of seems weird to say that, but Christian Jones was popping, my guy. Man, what's good, man? I'm I'm uh, blessed beyond beyond measure, man. Uh, taking every day and just having a smile on my face. But yeah, it, it is a little weird to say that, bro. I've been there for a while. <laughs> Definitely ready, ready for the next chapter. Yeah, his next chapter is exciting. A lot of stuff mm-hmm. that's about to happen. Your whole world's about to change, it feels like. Um, and so I just want to talk about that for a little bit. And I want to start off with just, have you had the time to take a step back and just think about where you've been, even not just yourself, but your family? I know your dad and your mom's from Jamaica. Dad yeah. was a banana farmer, came over yeah, here man. and now made something out of himself. And now his son is about to be a millionaire. And so... Have you taken that kind of step back and look at, wow, it's been a long journey to get to this point? I definitely have, man. And I definitely did it way more times than I could count. I mean, I catch myself, whatever I'm doing, like walking, working out, like driving around or anything and just like uh, being super, super thankful and and just like, wow, man. Um, I went home this past week and I was there for a couple of days, man. I was just kicking it with the fam and like, Seeing my dad, man, he's all up in the in the UT gear and stuff, and like going, <laughs> going to the gym, and like you know he, he got a smile on his face from ear to ear, man. I, I could just see in, in his eyes that I'm I'm making him proud, and uh, definitely, man, I, I credit all of that to to my upbringing and to to my family. They were hard on me, man. Like growing up, elementary school, even summertime, like my mom was the type to go to Sam's Club and buy like education books, and I couldn't go outside and play until I finished a chapter. You feel me, like? Mm and stuff like that and my dad man he uh he's uh he's cool man he's that's my best friend man i'm really that's that's my role model that's that's my hero that's that's everybody uh, like that's everything for him uh for me but um man like the only two things that he really wanted for me growing up was just to whatever i'm doing try my hardest and 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 don't quit you know and he he was pushing me and he found me the correct trainer and the correct strength coach and the correct guy for the meal plan you know all, all growing up and uh it's, it's cool man it's super cool to see man it's super super cool but uh yeah super thank you're making him proud you're yeah, making him proud definitely. <laughs> definitely. And i'm sure it must be a problem to see him in ut gear and knowing that like man i had the grades to go to ut i had the capabilities to make it to yeah. Texas and not only do that but thrive at ut can everyone goes to ut has success but you did and so congrats on that christian and you talked about your upbringing and one thing i I just wanted to kind of touch on real quick was just your soccer background i I know you were a superstar on the on the pitch back in the day do you ever miss playing soccer i know you're about to be an nfl player but (laughs) yeah i mean like honestly man i'm not gonna lie i definitely do a little bit here and there but i think it's more of like a kick around type of vibe right now got you it's like you know socially go out there and like maybe play some indoor which I, I don't do, I don't do, but like that would be nice. You know? <laughs> that clarify, gotta yeah, clarify. Yeah. Clarification, no, yeah. But uh, yeah, I definitely miss it a little bit. But I mean, I was looking back, man, the way that I was working for soccer, like my passion was there, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah. like the work, the way that I worked for football is like, yeah, I love football. You know what I mean? I, I was busting my tail as soon as I got in and it's paid, paid dividends, man. Um, but yeah, just, uh, you know, Talk about the football. Uh, did any of those skills you feel like translated uh, when it came to the the football field? Most definitely, I'll say like footwork and uh, just body control. You know, playing defense and soccer is nothing but like, but jockeying. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of the same thing playing the offensive line and pass pro. You're playing one on one defense basically, and uh, it's cool, man. It's just the 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 athletics the athletics that it takes for to play soccer. Like a lot of people don't take credit for it, but. Uh, it's a hard sport, man. And honestly, like, I'm going to throw my kid in it. No matter what other sport he plays, like, he's going to play soccer growing up first just to get his body, body control, hand-eye, foot-eye, well, foot-eye coordination, you know what I'm saying? So, And conditioning. Like, yeah, conditioning. conditioning is a big time. I know when I was in cross country, we used to play soccer at practice. So <laughs> I can, yeah, I kid you not. Yeah. Bro, Bro I cross country practice, that. we would play soccer. So Yeah. You couldn't stop running. Like, that was a rule. Like, you have to keep running throughout the whole 90 minutes. So... Look, that so much respect to any soccer player out there, you know. Yeah, but man. We're about to be talking to an NFL player pretty soon. And I just want to speak on the preparation to this point, Christian. I know you left Austin to go out to Frisco 
to train sure. and get your body right. Can you just explain to the people why you chose Frisco and what was out there for you to get prepared for the Senior Bowl and the NFL Combine? I chose Frisco because um, it was it was close to home. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Exos as well is a is a great uh, pre-draft and and like off-season training facility, man. And uh, the coach there, Coach Brent Calloway. He's a speed guru. And I know I was not the fastest, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to trying to cut down on that. And uh I knew right being right there, not having to hop on a plane, like as soon as we as soon as I finished up here, uh, the season ended, I was able to hop on the highway, throw my things in a couple of trash bags and, and like be on my next destination, you know what I'm saying? So instead of catching a plane and doing all of that, man. And uh the area is amazing. I love Frisco. I love the people there, I love the, the community, and it's like super clean, super quiet. And uh, you can definitely get lost in there, man. So I was at the crib playing FIFA, watching film. But, like, on the weekends, I go to the store. You know what I mean? I There's know. a place called uh, Cane Rosso Pizza. Bro, I'm telling you, man, that's, like, uh, that's up there, bro. It's up there. It's a pretty good pizza. Okay. So it's it's high, it, you recommend it. Okay, say less. I recommend it's it. Next time I go down there. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, you, you said that you, need, you knew you need to work on speed. What were some drills? What were some things that you were doing to help improve that? A lot of wickets, man. A lot of um, yeah. um, foot foot exercises, ankle ankle flexion, the ankle strengthening. You know what I mean? Because you're striking, and like really like learning how to run again. You feel me? Like I was kind of freestyling out there, but like running with form and all of that, and uh, the first step, hand like the all of that, man. I'm telling you, it's it's, it's a process. I remember like the first time getting in my three, like basically my my, my forty stance, the three point stance, like. It was uh, it was painful, bro. I'm like, bro, it's not gonna work. It's, it's, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But just like staying on it, man. Staying on it, and then yeah. like uh, seeing, seeing the improvements. What anything in like uh, anyone's profession, you know? what I mean, you see some type of improvements, and you're like, okay, I want to keep keep going. Let me keep trying this. Let me try something new and see if it can be even better. So uh, yeah, falling in love and, and seeing the the uh, the success of that, man. Every single day, you wake up hungry. You're hungry. And then I was also working out with a bunch of guys up there too. You know what I mean? It was uh, yeah. me, JT, Brooksy, Sweat, Merv, Ryan Watts, and uh, AD Mitchell. So oh, y'all are I, all up there in Frisco. Yeah, yeah. It was a little oh, squad, a little okay. community. The boys right. are back in town. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. It was cool, bro. It was really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. You able to work out with them, so I guess y'all had some battles too, going against each other, trying to put iron on iron. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, for the bigs group, you know, what I mean, we got a really great group. Me, Sweat, Murph, and we are working every single day. We're showing up early, staying late, man. The boys pushing me, I'm pushing them, and uh, just like cheering each other on. And then you know what's cool about that, man? Also, it wasn't just like our team; it was everyone else too, like mm. people from Michigan, people from UW, Ohio State. Like oh you, I mean it don't matter, you know what I mean? Just because like yeah. I feel like when you get to I don't wanna say to that level, you know what I'm saying? But like when you I, even when like you get to like college, man, you should always have respect to like the person who you lining up against and the person that you're practicing with, even if he's a walk on. Cause like the amount of work that that man did to get to that position right there, like it's it's that's leaps nice. and Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh that's nice. Just congratulating and, and pushing each other and like banter too, you know what I mean? Talking yeah. trash here and there, but all in all in a fun manner, you know what I mean? So just the the family aspect of that. So well, I know you got kind of close uh, at the Senior Bowl with some guys, right? I knew Latham from A and M, if that's correct. Yeah, you got cool with him, and so um, yeah. First off, Senior Bowl, you showed out. Oh my goodness, there were so many clips of you um, doing your thing out there. Was that a part yeah. of the process that you really felt like? Oh, I'm really doing this, you know what I'm saying? Against guys you've never faced before and doing it in front of a bunch of scouts. Was that a cool experience for your confidence? Yeah, it was a real uh great experience, man. It was just uh man. Yeah, I'm smiling just thinking about it. Smile on your face, got a smile on your face. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I remember um like the week prior, I was talking to my my boy Charles Turner. Yeah. He went to LSU and uh he played center and we're just rapping back and forth in my truck. I'm like, man, I'm like senior, but I'm, I'm feeling it, bro. He's like, look, man, it's a battle for y'all. It's just it's no different than Warzone or Fortnite. Like, <laughs> so I'm like that was a mindset, you know what I'm saying? As goofy as that sounds, bro, like, who the last man standing? Like, I'm not, hey, I'm you got to use anything, though. Single. Yeah, yeah. But it was really cool, man. Like, like yeah, exactly, man. So uh, <laughs> definitely going up there and, like, winning and then losing, you know what I mean, too. And, uh we're learning from that and seeing uh, the coaches and having interviews and 
they really realizing like man this is like really coming into fruition like this is happening you know what i mean so uh great great interviews great great hospitality from uh Mr. Mr. Jim Nagy and everyone from the Senior Bowl, man. The whole city of Mobile, like it's so it's a big thing down there. You know it's what I mean? Huge. So my dad from Mobile, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ain't not nothing else out there. You know what I'm saying? But you know, Senior Bowl is dope. Yeah. Like I see Senior Bowl is dope. A lot of trees, yeah. but yeah, Mobile is a nice little town out there in Bama. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. But yeah, I was going to say uh, when it came to just. You spoke about some of the guys that you met. You know, was there any guy in particular between the combine and the senior bowl, or even when you were working out in Frisco that you felt like you got really close to that you didn't know before the process started? Yeah, my boy Charles Turner, man. I'm telling okay. you, man, I was, <laughs> yeah, I was uh, basically we worked out together in, in Frisco. It was a great group of guys, a whole great big group from a lot of great schools, big schools, small schools, and everyone who just want to work hard, but. Uh, me and Charles were like basically the same person, man. We're like very goofy, uh, like energetic, you know what I mean? Very uh, hardworking. And even though we came from two like separate backgrounds and all that type of stuff, like that's my dog, man. That's my brother. I just met him and I feel like I've been knowing him forever. And I know he feels the same way. And uh, yeah, every step of the way, it was always nice to have one familiar face. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, it, it, was, it was really good, man. And he, uh, he helped me through a lot. I was going through a little bit in that in that process, but uh, he was there for me and uh, just like boosting my spirits and making sure like, hey man, like keep the main thing, the main thing. This is what you gotta work on, and this yeah. right here is like what what we gotta work on. So that's my that's my dog. Got you, Christian. I just wanted to touch on. Uh, I know we're talking a little bit about uh, Senior Bowl and the, the draft, but I really want to touch on a little bit about uh, this Pilates, Pilates and yoga. And yeah. you know, just tell us about for the average Joe or maybe for the average listener that's not really aware how that contributed to you ended up playing for you starting forty eight games for uh, Texas. Dang! All right, yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> I know it's crazy right, when you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, hey, that's a crazy number, bro. I'm telling you, like, all right, um, insane. So I, I didn't I didn't pick up Pilates until after that. Uh, that 22 year man okay yeah 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 actually not sorry sorry 21 that's 21 like a little bit in 21 but um that's your junior year am i tripping hold on bro hold on bro i'm trying to really think bro no nah, it was it was that summer of whatever summer it was bro it was recent man it was recent i knew it was like later on in my career gotcha and and, and bro i was just getting to the point where i was like look if i'm coming back i need to like be different i need to like do different you know what i'm saying i can't be doing the same thing every single day with the ample free time that i'm having now yeah. like school is getting less you know what i mean i just got like my master's and i was doing like different stuff just like regular classes and uh having all that free time and i was trying to be a, prof- a be a professional without being a professional mm. so yeah man i saw that a lot of people was going to liza uh in the past i've always seen it i've always like know knew about it but uh making that step was uh, definitely big and it helped me. I need to get flexible. I need to get better uh, endurance. And I need to get better, like uh, like better strength and like smaller muscles. You know, what I mean, muscle groups that you t- that you usually don't work out when you're like training for football or like regular sports. You know, what I mean, like yeah. as crazy as it sounds, man, holding body weight for a long time is terrible, <laughs> especially when you're 300 plus. Like I'm telling yeah, you, man. a lot of body I weight. Gonna, <laughs> I was gonna ask. Tell us, tell us how that first Pilates class went. <laughs> That first class, bro, I like was in a pool of, of sweat. It was bad, <laughs> slip sliding everywhere. Hand slipping, Finally, yeah, like, yeah, bro, like it was bad, bro. And my legs were dead. And I remember vividly, like sitting in my truck, just like this, I was like, oh. <laughs> like AC all the way up, bro. I was talking about summer for real, bro. Like summer, summer, like a hundred oh, plus heat. summer. Oh my god, yes, bro. So like I'm going through it. I'm just like drinking water, like ah. Oh. And that wasn't even the worst part, bro. It was the next day, bro. My abs, my abs would hurt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah that bro. That soreness. On fire. Was, hurt to sneeze, laugh. That, that soreness is different. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Hurt to laugh. Bro. I don't know. That was tough. I yeah. like to joke around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was super serious on workouts and stuff, man. But Miss Liza, man, she, she's amazing. Uh, she She's meticulous and she's patient. And she's she's she loves you and she cares about your development. It's not just there to get a workout, man. You, it's like a home away from home. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, 
you go in there to get humble, man. It's called, it's called the humble house for a reason. So, and then the yoga, I, uh, my dad made me do that in high school. I was doing hot yoga my senior year, and then I stopped, and then like picked that back up as well. So I've been going to Black Swan, and oh, uh, it's, yeah. it's been real good, man. Real good. It's the things behind the scenes that people don't understand the work that y'all put in. I, I think like small stuff like that is going a long way for your career. But people have no mm -hmm. idea, like a lot of y'all are doing Pilates or doing hot yoga. And when I see the videos, mm -hmm. I'm just amazed every time that someone of your stature can be able to hold your own body weight and do it yes, in a balanced type and drenched in sweat. Like, it, to me, it's crazy, yes, you know, just to see y'all yes, do it. Yes, but that's why y'all are athletes, so, you know what I'm saying? That's why y'all are different breeds. So, yeah. um, I, I think it's yeah. really dope. It's dope to see. And I wanted to touch back on something that you mentioned in that last soundbite. Um, just speaking about how you wanted to be a professional before actually being a professional. You know, um, mm -hmm. and I just want you to tell the people or give some insight about how hard it is mentally to focus your life around one goal. You know what I'm saying? I know uh, mm -hmm. throughout this process, I'm sure everything that you do <laughs> every single day was around preparing for the NFL draft. And so what is yeah. that mentally the hard part of trying to do that? I say uh, the hardest part of, of doing that is being able to compartmentalize and realize that uh, sometimes extra work is just extra. You know what I'm saying? You don't ever want to run yourself in, into the ground, but you you always want to make the daily uh, progress and steps. But um, man, it, it was it's tough. It's it's hard, man. It's like it's it's extremely stressful. You know what I'm saying? Um, extremely competitive and. Uh, extremely like uh scrutinized you know what i mean criticized but um i say like in it when, when you're in it with your teammates and with everyone like the people that i, I met in in frisco and the people i met in mobile and the people i met in indy like it's such a, a stressful thing that like you come together and it's and it's not you know what i mean because you're looking around and everyone's doing it you, you know what i'm saying it's like man like people done it before me people are gonna do it after me and like you never want to make it uh, as as big as as it seems, but I say the biggest thing in this whole time from like me being out of school was really um, making sure that I always made sure to make to know that the the checkpoints were not the like the destinations. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't the end all yeah. be all. So whether it was like getting fit, that wasn't the end all be all. Senior bowl did good, that wasn't the end all be all. Combine. That wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And even when I get drafted, like, it's not, I, I haven't even, like, put on the jersey yet, done a workout, got the playbook, did a practice, you know what I'm saying? Like, so there's a whole lot of more stuff that, like, comes along with it. And I feel like some people get uh, carried away a little bit. I don't know. But, how do you, like, how do you not you let gotta, that get to you? How do you, how do you not let the checkpoints become your destination? It's my, my dad, man. That's why he's, like, he, I don't want to say that's why he's my best friend. Like, he's my dad, and he's my best friend, my hero, my role model. But, like, man, that man is, is very knowledgeable, and he takes the time out to read and, and, and share that knowledge with me. So a lot of things about manifestation, um, positive energy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Making sure that, that in here is okay to be out there and, like, project and, and put into the universe exactly what you want. And it's okay to, like, look up and scream, like, I want to do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is my goal. You know what I'm saying? And, like, stand on it and, like, and and, and believe it. Because, like, it's you. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, uh, I don't, I don't want to, right, I'm just, I'm going to say something, bro. Like, I, mean, I don't, I don't want to Let's go, bro. bro. Let's go. Let's go. All right. All right. All right. So, like, <laughs> this may sound stupid, bro. All right, nah, but, like, <sighs> like, life, if you, if you look at it like this, like, life being a video game, right? And then you yourself are like the main character of said video game. You know what I mean? And you're in story mode and you go through the story mode. You can skip the dialogue and you could like just go and do the mission and not do the side quest. Or like not look around the universe and be like, man, like the people, the creators of the game really did a really good job. You know what I'm saying? Like look at the flowers, look at the animals, this and the other. Like it's fire. And then you speed through and you hurry up and like, and then like you're not, you know, you're not doing anything. I guess like you, you reach the end of it and then you're not like happy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like... Being able to like take the time out and like man like appreciate everything it makes you want to like I guess play the game of life even harder you know what I'm saying yeah because you're thankful for everything you're thankful to wake up you're thankful to walk around you're thankful to like have an opportunity to feel upset about something you know what I'm saying like some people can't even don't even have that capacity to have to like control their own emotions and stuff so 
because it's like way deep in the one thing and not, yeah not man so just like yeah so like realizing that bro it's not as big as 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 you may like make it out to be and like you got to be able to have gratitude and be able to just like sit and man like this is great it's not where i want to be but i'm alive i'm healthy and tomorrow i got another opportunity i'm gonna make the most of it stuff like that so no that's Bro, my dad, man. Why did you not want to share that? Come on, bro. That's great <laughs> stuff, bro. Bro, because it's like life of video game, like for real. You know what I'm saying? But... You got to relate it somehow, though. Like, that was hey, we, we right here, though. We right here. Yeah, bro. We yeah. the same level. That was awesome. We hear you. That was we awesome. Yeah. And so, so when we talk about the, you know, appreciating the flowers, what is what does Christian Jones do outside of football? Mm. Bro, like, honestly, bro, I'm boring. <laughs> like, I've, been, I've just been playing FIFA. I've been listening to like music, uh, a lot of new albums and stuff, a lot of old albums from artists. And I, mean bro, I like. Uh, what you, what's your thoughts on this J. Cole Kendrick beef? Nah, hoopla. hoopla. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a bunch of hoopla, man. Like, it's a bunch of hoopla. Because J. Cole already apologized and stuff. It was just like already, attention bro. grabbers. <laughs> yeah. It ain't really even been like two weeks, if that, bro. You feel me? He's just a but nice guy. It's That's the right. problem. He's a nice guy. He did the same thing with Lil Pump. You know, he dissed him and then brought him in for an interview. It's like. Yeah, I like, do remember that. The interview was live, though. Hey, it was. It was. It was. It was. It was. <laughs> but, like, what you would call it? Uh, I guess, like, any any way to kind of uh, just relax, man. Also, like, I like fashion. You know, yeah. I've been going around looking, window shopping, and just, like, seeing, like, okay, like, if I do that, like, what could I, like, piece it together or something like that. But, uh, just, like, Did yeah, really just playing fashion the game. Fashion-wise for a big man? Huh? It, yeah, honestly, bro, it is, bro. I'm yeah. not going to lie. Yeah. Like, the thrift stores that be all around the city and stuff, it's a little harder to find a selection. But there are some good stores that have that. And then there's also, uh, like, we got private stock in, like, aisle five and stuff. So it's a little, it's a little, you know, they, they carry a little bit bigger sizes, which is which is That's cool. Dope. Yeah, and then the domain, bro. The oh. domain has always had. Okay, I didn't know oh, that. My I didn't know domain had some spots. Yeah, and did. so, speaking about the domain and just being in Austin, um what, what's what's been your favorite part over the last five six years here in austin and like part of football team and um what is something that you're going to miss the most just being a ut football player i'm really gonna miss like all right <sighs> wow, come man. on man get yeah. corny with us man get corny <laughs> 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 all right yeah 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 exactly what it was bro it's gonna sound like so corny but it's so true like i'm gonna miss it all mm -hmm. i'm gonna miss everything about like being here um i definitely came in here a kid you know what i'm saying and like came out a, a, a young young adult and like uh the lessons that i learned and the people that i met you know what i'm saying like like i met some great people in school and like lifelong friends that I would like really like cherish a whole lot for them, you know what I mean? Like and uh, and and teammates and, and experiences and, and fans and, and every everything. Like you go around, man, anywhere in the community is football season. There's support, you know what I'm saying? Win or lose, and uh, they they just want to see success and they want us to to have success, and it's it's amazing. And like really like the the lifestyle, bro. Like Austin's live. Austin there's not dope, a lot. Bro. There's not a whole lot of city. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of cities like this, bro. Like, we got natural water, you feel mm -hmm. me? You go hiking, you do a whole lot of stuff. Like, you can do it all here. And it's, like, kind of like a mini Hollywood, in my opinion. Yeah. That's why I feel like people will be moving here because they feel like they could, like, come in and, like, change their whole life and be somebody who they imagine themselves to be, which is true because there's ample opportunity, ample things to do around here. So uh, no state income tax, too. So that <laughs> Yeah, finding, finding a city like Austin yeah, is going to be hard, man. But, uh yeah this place will always be home and like people around the, the community see me grow up and i really appreciate them yeah and, uh, you, take you care like of the me. epitome of development i mean when you got here to when you're leaving now like you're a completely different mm -hmm. player so what is it yeah. about coach Flood? You. can you just tell anyone tell it like what what makes him great you know because you see the development mm -hmm. not just in you and a lot of different guys on the offensive of line mm -hmm. but what makes him so special as a coach his teaching background, he was a, a, a teacher uh, b back in the day. And uh, him being able to to uh, project and, and, and teach each individual in their own special way is uh, is amazing. And then, like, th there's sound bites, you know what I mean? There's little tidbits and, and 
like lines that you could remember in a game and be like, okay, this situation, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna say any of them, but like, you know me like, some, 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 okay, I gotta do this. If this is this, then I gotta do that. It's like you're playing faster, you're way, way like faster. And when you play faster, you're not thinking and you're not nervous, you know what I'm saying? So having that trust in, in what he's saying and him being extremely knowledgeable in, in the game of football and offensive line play, like he's there every single step of the way, improving. Even even when you win a rep, you know what I mean? You could always be better. And he's there like, you won this, but you could do this, you could do this, you could do this. And, uh, man, he's a coach that you want to play for. He's a coach that you want to succeed for. He's a coach that you want to, like, you don't want to lose, man, because you, you want to have him there, like, forever. You know what I mean? He, he's, a, he's a great coach, uh, even better leader example and uh, i love him to death man he changed my life and uh yeah that's my guy that's man awesome. coach Flair. that's awesome yeah. he changed your life that's a huge line no, that right sounds there. sincere yeah yeah right. um Dion, it's you real. Have a question about this draft prospect talk to us man what, what are they saying about you what what are they saying that you you know you're great at what, what you may need to work on uh, what are the scouts saying about christian jones I've been hearing a whole lot of things, like a whole lot of ranges, which is good, you know what I'm saying? But it's all coming in and, and being able to, to have an impact and uh, play, you know what I mean? Or, or be swing tackle. Yeah. But um, every team that I talk to, every like scout, man, they 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 love what they see. And uh, I just got to get better at a few things and, and really hone in and, and be a professional at that next level. And I feel like I'll have a very successful career just because of um, – yeah, man. I mean, like, I feel it in here. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, they're saying it as well. So that's uh, not the confirmation that, like, you know, you need. But, like, it's good to hear. So you, you're doing the right thing. You just got to stay with it. But I'm excited, man. I'm going to go back home, be with the family, and just get the call, man, and uh, understand that there's no need to be anxious. And God has this whole pathway already paved out. And I just, I just got to follow it and, and give it my all and it's gonna paint a beautiful picture yeah you just gotta walk through the pathway bro he opened the door you just gotta yeah. walk through it you know what i'm saying yeah. um and yeah. look, just from my own perspective your versatility is something that stands out to me bro i think with you being able to be in different positions and start at as many games as you have you've proven that not only can you play different positions but you can stay healthy you know and the best ability mm -hmm. is availability and we already know that like mm -hmm. so uh that's going to be a great asset to any team that picks you up and so, uh, on so, that note, though, um, any any particular visit that you uh, that you liked the most, or yeah. anything stood out uh, from any facility that you've seen? Uh, honestly, bro, most of my visits have been on Zoom, okay. which has been all right. It's been cool, but I was able to go to the Texans. And I, ah, I was back at home. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, <laughs> that was cool, bro. That was cool. Facility was cool. NRG, you feel me? Like. You know, I, I already know what it kind of looked like. You feel yeah, me? So yeah, like, thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah, yeah. But it, it was it was real nice. The, the people uh, were, were, man, caring. And uh, it was an awesome experience. So, so And you said draft day so. plans is to be at the crib? Yeah, yeah, bro. At the crib with it. All right. So are you going to put that ish on or are we just <laughs> we throwing some calm on? Bro. All right. I'm not going to lie. I, nah, nah, I'm lying. I'm lying. Oh, this crib, boy got it's gonna be like it's gonna be like 50, 50 bro it's gonna be like a calm fit you feel me like comfortable okay. looking decent but like i'm probably gonna get a little stressed and i may be sweaty bro so i ain't trying to be in nothing crazy that's fair, you feel that's me fair, that's fair yeah. that's yeah. Facts. So then, but like yeah after, after that i don't know probably so crazy okay hey, i'm excited to see it for sure. that's for sure Yourself. I know you. I know you're big in the fashion. Sure. Uh, and last thing we, before I let you go, I know you gotta go to yoga. Um, and so, mm -hmm. uh, for the Texas fans right now, you know, next season's coming up. Anybody on the offensive line that they should be looking out for to take that next step, or someone that you're excited to see take the next step and, and kind of take your place um, next season? Yeah, uh, Big Cam for yeah. sure, man. Big Cam, he's working hard. Uh, he he's he's great. He got like. He, he got something, man. He got like this badge with him, man. He, he does a really great job in, in, in pass throw that only he could kind of master that technique. And it's, it's really great to see. So I can't wait till he uh, hones in on that, man, and just goes out there and, and dominates. I'm expecting a very, very good season. And uh, from from all from all the guys, though, yeah. man, they're all working hard. Uh, another one, Nato, you feel me? Mm -hmm. uh, he, he's working hard. Uh, Cole, he's always in the mix, working hard, man. I'm really excited to see, and I'm excited to see how uh, how Huncho does, man. Big Jake, yeah. I know it's a it's 
he's he's the he's the leader out there for real, man. I know he's gonna take care of them boys. That's my dog. So uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I can't wait to see what team picks up a great athlete and a great player and a great human in Christian Jones. So thank you so much for taking the time out, bro. I know you got a busy, busy schedule. Big month, bro. It's it's the month. It's time, yeah. right? It's here. Yeah. So congrats for everything that you've accomplished so far and what you what God's going to help you accomplish in the future, Christian. Thank you so much, bro. So appreciate you. I don't know what it is about Christian, but he just puts a smile on my face. Like every time I talk to him, he's laughing, joking, great energy, great spirits. And now I know he gets it from his pops. So uh, just a great interview. I would say not even an interview, it just felt like a conversation. So just a great conversation with Christian, man. What'd you take away, Dion? I mean, this guy's passionate about a lot of things. Uh, his mm -hmm. family, his parents, football. Uh, you can tell he, he still has a big love for football right uh <laughs> with soccer and he plays a lot of fifa um and i mean you can just tell he's a really great locker room guy just from uh this short combo we had with him so i mean whatever team drafts him they're gonna get a, a quality guy um and you can tell that he's a hard-working guy and pilates and yoga Ugh, it's a crazy combo look i know the people that do pilates and yoga they say that's not an easy thing and to be a large man <laughs> I can only imagine, can only imagine, right, what, what, yeah. that, what that looks like in there. But uh, what about you, Corey? Yeah, I just think that, like you mentioned, whoever drives Christian is going to get a great human. Um, and you're going to get a guy that, if you listen to him talk, he had a great upbringing and a great community around him. Uh, his family is supporting him all the way. Uh, he has a lot of smart and trustworthy people in his circle. And I think that's, that's going to help him throughout his NFL career because, you know, there's so many distractions when the money comes. But I think he's he's so grounded and rooted in his beliefs and in family values that it's going to be such a positive spirit in that locker room for whatever locker room he goes into. So I just can't wait to see how he develops even more because the moment he stepped on the 40 acres to the moment he left, completely different player. I mean, completely different. And so you can tell that he takes, he takes and listens to a bunch of teachings and he heard how Coach Flood was such a big impact in his life. Um, said that he saved his life, basically. Um, and, and I think that was pretty dope to hear as well. So, yeah, a lot of great things from that Christian conversation. But little little to none, like the only thing I could say is he's a great person. <laughs> I mean, he's just a great person and he's a great right tackle as well. So uh, hopefully he gets utilized the right way in whatever offense that he gets drafted by. But, yeah, man, I know one offense that was cooking was UConn last night against Purdue, Zach Eady down low. Let's transition a little bit to some college basketball recap. Uh, big time matchup, national championship. It, it was kind of close to start out, but then UConn is just that good, huh, Dion? Is that what it looked like to you? Yeah, I mean, it just, <laughs> they didn't look like they, they didn't look like they, they, they didn't look like, they look like two different championship teams. Uh, I'll mm. say that. One looks like they deserve to be there. One looks like, I'm not gonna say they got lucky, um, but they just didn't yeah. look like they should have been on the same court together. Um, like I was telling Corey before the pod, I would love, I would have loved to seen, uh, see UConn in Houston. I know they had that injury uh, that kind of hindered them from advancing far, but I just would have thought that would have been a more even matchup. Um, and like I say, like I was telling Corey, you know, the fact that Edie got uh, cement for feet and he can't really move. <laughs> Around the court. <laughs> and he know. still dropped crazy numbers, though. I mean, yeah. He got to put some respect on his final stat line. I, I, yeah, and like I said, I mean, he's 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 good. But I think I don't see his game growing anymore. And, of course, I'm open to being wrong, but I think this is his final form or peak mm. Edie, um, Zach Edie. And, I, like I said, who uh, – we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see when this in this draft. I mean, the league is a lot of – you know, five out basically. And I yeah. don't think being able to just stand in the paint uh, is going to get the job done. But as far as the game, I mean, like, like you say, it didn't really, really didn't live up to the hype of as like, uh, as the girls, I mean, the girls wasn't as close either, but it was a lot more uh, energy anticipated, a lot more intensity. Um, and, you know, again, the women just, just more fun to watch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, it's just more fun to watch. Like, low key, like, it's just more fun to watch. So, and we're being honest, you know, I, I was locked into that South Carolina um, 
Iowa game. That's for sure. Now, this game, I was out and about. Um, and, you know, I was looking up at the TV, looking back down. Now, Edie did score 37 points and 10 rebounds. So, like, crazy stat line, but not enough. Uh, and what if I told you, Dion, that Texas Texas lost to UConn by 10 points earlier this year? Can you believe that? Are we like, talking about Texas? Are we? Are you really trying to do that right now? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> Texas lost by 10 points to UConn. Purdue lost by 15. Oh, my God. You know how the math goes. That means, you know, Texas can beat Purdue. Yeah. You know, that's how it goes. Oh, uh, but anyways, yeah, dude. That, that UConn team was, I mean, arguably one of the best teams that we've seen in a long time. Just all around. They have everything that you need. They have a big man down low in Klingon. They got guards all over the place. Like, and they're they're deep. You know, right. and so that's the other thing. So I, I just think that team was slept on to begin the year. Remind you, none of those guys was voted preseason first team in the Big East. None of those guys on that team. And so expectations weren't there. And for them to finish the year the way that they did it, so dominantly, respect to Coach Hurley for getting those boys prepared, developed, and ready to go for the March Madness tournament and proving why he's one of the best coaches in the nation. But another great coach is... Dawn Staley, my goodness, she has a juggernaut over there in South Carolina, beating Caitlin, the fighting Caitlin Clark's, I guess I should say, over there in Iowa. <laughs> Caitlin and, Clark uh, and the Temptations. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, it, was a, it was a decent game. I felt like Caitlin, towards the end of it, started to chuck up shots that, like, all right, you got time left. You don't need to start throwing up threes. But I felt like she kind of, she not tossed the game away too early, but the thing she tried to put the ball in her hands too early and not use her team a little bit, a little bit too, I guess, I guess abandon her team a little bit too early, I guess I should say. Um, but that was just one takeaway I got. Camila Cardoso. Oh my goodness. She's different. Oh, <laughs> can't wait to see her in the WNBA. Top and five, uh, top five, top five. Yeah. Yeah. She's different. So grabbing boards, <laughs> the reason why South Carolina won that game clearly and uh, respect to her. But I like what Don Staley said after the game though, D just, Paying respect to Caitlin Clark and saying, like, thank you for all you've done for our sport and calling her one of the goats. Do you respect that? Uh, for sure. I mean, I think uh, as far as propelling the game in this time that we're in of helping the game get more notoriety. Um, yes, she's definitely one of the goats in that regard. Um, she didn't win any championships in her time at yeah. Iowa. But mm -hmm. and and again, that does not mean she's not a goat because there are a lot of goats, right? They were throwing a bunch of names. Well, you got Maya Moore, you got her, you got her. Yes, it's crazy yes, too yes, that Maya Moore yes. doesn't have a chip. You know, they they threw Brianna. Bro, have you seen Brianna Stewart's like? That's bro. Her accolade list is oh, it's insane. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. She's um, different, bro. But yeah, as far as like propelling the game in this time of social media and getting more eyes on the sport um you can definitely say that she was one of the goats um and i think a lot of people are tuning in or were tuning in over these last two years uh not it's not solely for her but a, a good a good portion of people are tuning in to see her shoot from the logo um and you know that's always exciting to see so I definitely agree. I definitely agree. And you just got to respect Don. She's always a class act. She's always going to say the right thing. She's always going to make sure that her team is, is acting the right way, playing the right way. Um, and again, it's crazy to think that nobody really was talking about them all year. <laughs> and they didn't lose a game. <laughs> that is kind of under crazy. radar. Yeah. Facts, right? they so under, everyone's talking about the Bayou Barbie, you know, Haley Van Lith, everybody over there at LSU. Juju. Juju out there. Cameron Brink out Paige. there in West Coach. Yeah. Paige Beckers. Like, but it's, it felt like crazy. South Carolina just didn't have like that superstar personality. Of course, like Camila Cardoso is a superstar on the court. But she's not out there outspoken like that. She's not going to give you a lot of sound bites like that. So um, I think she just had a great team that cared about winning. And that's it. And so when you have a team like that, that's how you become, what is that, 39 and 0? Um, so 30, 38 and 0. And I think what they only, they've only lost, what, three games in the past year, two years or something yeah, like that? Something stupid like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it, it just seemed like all year, even throughout the tournament, nobody was really giving them the attention that they deserve so i mean i could see them going on a 
uh, Yukon like run where every year you can kind of sketch them into a final four uh, championship. Cause I, Don is just finding the right girls. <laughs> I mean, and she got, she got more coming. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> Malaysia is a beast out there, bro. And she hadn't even been like fully unleashed yet because she didn't have to be. She only played, I think like 18 minutes in the, in the final game. Uh, and she's going to be a 40 minute girl later in her career but like uh, someone like that right a freshman like that who has a lot of talent doesn't need to showcase all of it just wait her turn this is what Don Staley has built at South Carolina we talk about factories and football you know what I'm saying like a Texas that what is building right now uh, Alabama or Georgia they just keep getting talent and developing it and people aren't leaving but instead they're trusting the process shout out Joel and B for coming back by the way um, but that's what Don Staley has built so far at South Carolina. Just a factory of talent that's going to the WNBA. You think about it, bro. You got Asia Wilson of the world. You got the Leah Boston's of the world that's doing their things in the WNBA. And not just doing their things, but dominating uh, while doing it. And so shout out to Don Staley for building this powerhouse over there at South Carolina. And I don't know who's going to knock them down, bro. I don't know who's going to knock them down, but... Someone, tough. someone's going to have to step up to do it because, like you said, it could definitely be like a UConn-type run pretty soon if no one is able to step up to the plate. But you know how I feel about Texas women's basketball. So I think I think that's a one. That's a one how team. Do you, how, do you, how do you feel, Corey? <laughs> if, that's a one I team. Don't, I don't know. Tell us how you feel. What you mean, bro? <laughs> Tell us what how you feel. Mean? I Texas think they got a shot. Basketball. I think they got a shot. You get Rory right. back. Madison Booker gets better. You get these two mm-hmm. All-Americans coming in. Only person you lose is Shaylee Gonzalez from this Elite Eight roster. What are we right. talking about? What are we talking mm-hmm. about? Um, and remind you, when Rory was healthy, mm-hmm. they beat the brakes off UConn. Mm-hmm. Let's let's not forget that, right? Beat the brakes off of them. And so that was before Madison Booker got her confidence to where it was by the end of the year. So you right. put Rory Harmon back on that roster, add two All-Americans, Madison Booker gets better. That's a recipe for success and a Final Four run, in my opinion. But like I said, we're not talking about Texas women's basketball. We're talking about South Carolina. And they're at the top of the mountain right now. Congrats to them. Congrats to Don Staley. And uh, congrats to women's sports in general for becoming what it is to this day. So um, great stuff. Great stuff. And great pod, too, Dion. Oh, my goodness. Uh, thank you again for Christian Jones for hopping on. Dion, one last final words or final thoughts, I should say. Yeah, final thoughts. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go with uh, Cold World. (laughs) You let us down, my brother. (laughs) You let us down. You let us down. Tough situation Uh, out there in the rap game right now. Sheesh, brother. Like, if you know me, I'm I'm a a diehard. From Friday Night Lights, I'm locked in. That's my guy. But boy. They, this brother said he couldn't sleep. <laughs> oh man! <You> just, <laughs> oh man! It, yeah, it's, it's it's sad. It's sad. If you don't know, J Cole dropped a diss to Kendrick Lamar, and uh, on Friday and on Sunday he came back and said, "Hey man, I just couldn't sleep. This didn't feel right in my spirit." <laughs> uh, What's wrong with that, bro? It, it's just bad time. He's a nice like, guy. It, like I said, he's a it, nice guy. Let it sizzle, like. Like let it, let it breathe a little bit. Like that's something you're supposed to come back in six months, eight months, a year. Yeah, man, I just didn't feel right about dropping that. Forty eight hours later. Yeah, it didn't simmer for a an, week. That's unheard of. Yeah, that, bro. that is crazy. That's unheard of. Like you didn't even have to say nothing. Matter of fact, you could have just took it off, quiet, took it off of streaming quietly, and just gone about your business. But you gave us a heartfelt speech. Hey, if you think Kendrick is the greatest. Make some noise. It's like, ah, uh, come on, bro. <laughs> what happened like, to the rap game, Dion? What happened look, to the rap game? People used to shoot each other over this. Yeah, and I didn't expect none. Of, I didn't. I didn't expect that from J. Cole or Kendrick. Like, of course, you can tell that these guys are uh, LeBron and Kobe when it comes to this. Like, they really best friends behind the scenes. Um, but just so soon, like. It's just like, damn, bro, you just kind of already threw the white flag in after you shot the last shot. It's just crazy. So, yeah, that's sad. As a J. Cole fan, y'all can y'all have the right to to kill this brother when it comes to <laughs> firing him up online. And, uh, you know, as, as Cole fans, we just got to accept it, man. He, yeah. He's just a great rapper that he don't really want to smoke, man. He just want to rap. He just wants great, to rap. So. 
Uh, what about you, Corey? What about <laughs> your, what's your final thoughts? Final thoughts. Uh, shout out Austin FC, bro. Two straight dubs. Can you believe it? They're on a winning streak. Um, so didn't expect that to happen. They had a thriller, by the way, this past weekend. Seven goals in their games. 4-3 dub. Um, yeah, yeah. Sebastian Drews, he had two two goals in that game. And I, I don't want to say it now, but, you know, does Austin FC, are they finding something? Are they finding something throughout the season? We'll see. We'll see. But a little two-game streak. So shout out to them because I know, you know, we've been very vocal about Austin FC and the stuff that they do and even like the fan base at Austin FC and, and um, the supporter yeah. section. But it's great hopefully to see the, them. Be hopefully able the fans appreciate it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like, fans were <laughs> when they had their pitchforks a <laughs> few weeks ago. So hopefully fans are ready they, to get you know, coach out of there, bro. Yeah, hopefully they, oh, hey, okay, well, well, we'll let you last a little bit longer. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hopefully it good. simmers down. Hopefully it simmers down after this past weekend. Like I said, two straight dubs for Austin FC. Shout out coach, coach Wolf for getting getting the haters a little bit off his back because they're not going to be fully off his back until they win a championship, it feels like. So, yeah, Austin FC, congrats. Congrats on the dub. But that's all I got for you, D. And that's all we got for you, listener. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the pod. I hope you enjoyed the conversation with Christian Jones and enjoyed our banter uh, because we are not great at this thing. We're still learning day by day how to do this podcast thing. So thank you so much for spending time with us. You can listen to anything else, but you're listening to us. So we like, appreciate comment, that. And mm, like, comment, mm. and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe, baby. Don't forget that. Mm. Can't forget that. Mm -hmm. Make sure y'all like, comment, y'all subscribe, and y'all sharing the clips. You send it to your granny so she can get a good chuckle. <laughs> uh, send it to your nephew that, that he got TikTok doing dances. Yo, plug them in. Let's let's get them plugged in. Let's get them on the modes. Let's get them listening to the modes. No, let's let's get these views up, guys. Appreciate that. Corey. Appreciate that. As always, y'all. See y'all a little bit, Dion. You're. You're...